Okay, I think we're live. Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me in my basement. My name is Greg Lewis. I'm the marketing director for Metastock and this is our temporary studio. Thank you so much for joining us for today's live streaming presentation. Today's presentation will be simultaneously shown on GoToWebinar and here on YouTube. If you'd prefer to watch this on GoToWebinar, you can go to metastock.com right now and uh, go to the registration, re register for GoToWebinar, and you can go watch it over there. Or you can just stay here and watch it over here. It doesn't really matter to us, and it's pretty much the same experience. But you should know that there's a separate chat on GoToWebinar as to YouTube. And uh, so uh, whenever you're chatting, if the today's speaker, who I'll talk about in a second, doesn't see that, Jeff Gibby, who is our host, will, uh, will whenever he can, pass that question on to the speaker or answer it himself, or we'll just answer it in chat. Speaking of chat, when you come on today, go ahead always and uh, let us know who you are and where you're from. I see Nelly has already said hello. Hello, Nelly. Um, and uh, I see there's several people on right now. So go ahead and say hello as you're coming on and uh, let us know where you're from and we'll say hello back. Hey, it has occurred to me that um, I erroneously assume that most people that come to watch our webinars have heard of Metastock or have some concept of what Metastock is. Um, I got feedback that's not really the case. So, I mean, a lot of people do, of course, know what Metastock is, and we have a lot of regulars that come listen to our webinars. But for you new folks who do not know what Metastock is, I prepared a video for just this sort of occasion, and I'll play it right now. Hi there, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. As the marketing director, I get asked all the time, what is Metastock? How can I help my trades? Well, stick around for about three minutes and I'll tell you. Metastock is an award-winning software and data package that has been helping traders for over 35 years. Simply put, Metastock is a tool for traders like you to analyze the markets. Metastock helps you take the guesswork out of trading by offering a methodical, systematic approach to some key questions all traders come up against. Questions like, how do I decide which securities to trade when there are literally thousands to choose from? Which strategy should I use and how do I test that strategy before spending my first trading dollar? When should I enter and exit a trade? How can I effectively manage the securities I'm interested in? And of course, how do I know where prices will go next? At the core of Metastock are the power tools. The power tools give professional grade analysis tools to private traders like you and me. You can scan the market with the Metastock Explorer to filter and sort securities that show buy and sell signals based on your criteria. The Metastock System Tester lets you test most strategies through a process called backtesting which allows you to see how your strategy would have performed over time. You can easily manage and monitor the securities you are interested in with Quote Center. Quote Center lets you sort on a variety of criteria to view the data that's important to you. Then just double click on a security if you want to see its chart. With the Metastock Forecaster, you can even take advantage of patented technology to view probable future prices. If you're an options trader, you're going to love Metastock's OptionScope. OptionScope puts all the critical info at your fingertips, displaying sortable, customizable, color-coded options data, including the Greeks. And Metastock has solutions for traders of all levels and interests. If you're just getting into trading, you will appreciate the education offered by our many built-in systems. In addition to pointing out buy and sell signals, Metastock explains how they work in an easy-to-follow commentary window. Metastock has built-in systems based on popular strategies like MACD, Bollinger Bands, Turtle Trading, Candlesticks, and many more. Metastock even has the very popular and exclusive Rahul Mohindar Oscillator System, or simply known as the RMO. And as you become a more experienced trader, Metastock grows with you. Advanced analysts will enjoy the comprehensive list of trading systems and indicators and the ability to build their own systems. And if you're a day trader, you can't do better than Zenith, the real-time news, data, and analysis package offered by Refinitiv, a world leader in market data. 
add on the world-class support, and it's not hard to see why Metastock has won the Stocks and Commodities Reader's Choice Award for 26 consecutive years. To find out more about Metastock and how it can help your trading, visit metastock.com or contact a product professional via phone, email, or chat. Okay, did that answer all your questions about Metastock? <laughs> if you have more questions, chat them in. We'll answer any questions you have about Metastock or anything about today's presentation. Speaking of today's presentation, today's presenter, I should say our guest presenter, is one Steve Bigelow. Steve is immensely popular. Uh, I can tell by the amount of people that are already here. Uh, we will be starting in about four minutes. Uh, let me show you something real quick. So... This is Mr. Steve Bigelow. Uh, Steve has had a relationship with Metastock for many years. I haven't actually had the occasion to meet Steve yet, but Jeff has known him for probably 20 years. And uh, so we're really excited to see him in about three minutes. Another thing I wanted to let you know about is we have a market recap tomorrow. Now, this was initially supposed to be with um, Anne-Marie Bain. But she had to cancel. She didn't realize she had a, 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 another engagement. And so we got uh, Jeff Tompkins, who is no slouch at all and is very knowledgeable about the markets and has uh, been with us before in the market recap. And he's uh, great, and you don't want to miss it. Now, if you want to uh, attend the market recap, just go to Metastock and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I should say go to youtube.com slash Metastock and subscribe to our channel. And then you can... Um, Sorry, finding things, get my way back. Then you, <laughs> okay. All right, I'm back. <laughs> so just go to youtube.com slash metastock and uh, subscribe and then you'll be reminded of that event. Now today's event should be happening in about two minutes and I do see that Jeff and Steve Bigelow are both present, so I anticipate that that will in fact happen in two minutes. Until then, one more thing I wanted to show you. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is our website. If you go to metastock.com and you select the little banner here at the top, the banner here at the top, you can go to our registration for our APAC Summit. The APAC Summit is a um, is about a quarterly event we do. It, it's, it features about eight speakers with a, with a expertise in APAC area. Uh, those speakers have yet to be announced, but this is on August 15th, and this would be a great time for you to go ahead and uh, subscribe because then you just get a reminder and you don't have to worry about it. So we just wanted to remind you about that. Okay. We got about one minute and 34 seconds, so I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, and I'll go ahead and uh, get those guys on the line.
All right, we're live. Yep. I'll go ahead and kick us off. Hey, everybody. Uh, Jeff Gibby over at Metastock. Thanks for coming. Hope you're doing well today. We have a very, very good guest. And uh, before I introduce and start to talk about him, let's go ahead and read a legal disclaimer. So today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the coming software plugins. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So today we have, uh, as, I, as I alluded to earlier, now you know, uh, we're, we have Steve Bigelow. Steve's been a partner of Metastock for, I'm going to say, quite a few number of years now. Uh, he's been a great partner. Uh, I love the methodologies that he teaches. Today he's going to talk about gaps and dojis and some of my favorite patterns. So um, Mike asks if all these license plates are from cars that I've crashed. No, uh, they are from cars that I've owned, though. So <laughs> over the years, um, in any case, good question. Thanks for asking, Mike. Steve, uh, let's go ahead and get this over to you. How are you doing today? Doing good. Good. Doing good, Jeff. Uh, do Just I have to? Do I have to hit show my screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Show my screen. Start broadcast. No. Uh, you shouldn't say start broadcast now. I do see your screen now. Okay. And uh, the, the broadcast is started. Okay. So you're oh. ready to go. All right. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. The first question I usually ask is how many people have seen my presentations before? That way, at least I can gauge how much time I need to, to show the signals or patterns on the, on the charts. Uh, I guess Y for yes and N for no. So far, looks like most everybody, okay. Everybody has, all right, good. Uh, Rodney, I'll make sure I make a, get enough explanation then. So the reason we do gaps is because most money managers or uh, yeah, money managers tell people to stay away from gaps because you don't know what they're doing with the price. With candlestick signals, gaps are your best friend because if we know what is going on in investor sentiment with the signal, we know what to expect or what to expect from a gap afterwards. So there's 12 major signals. I'll go through this real quick. I won't read them, but out of the 50 or 60 candlestick signals, there's approximately uh, 12, not approximately, there are 12 that is all you need to learn. Um, and if you learn those 12 and understand what the Japanese rice traders have illustrated for us of why those signals occur, what the investor sentiment was, you pretty much have a handle on what makes prices move as somebody with the same uh, background of 50 years of trading. So I tell people, learn the 12 major signals. Don't use up a lot of mental time and energy learning the other uh, 50 or 60. But I tell people, at least uh, peruse them, recognize them. You don't have to learn what they do. Just uh, whenever you see something on a chart that looks like one of them, you can always go back to one of the reference books and see what, what they're saying. So the most uh, profitable trade setups is based upon a gap. The Japanese race traders called them windows, but a gap is basically where you have no trading within a range from the trading range of one day to the trading range of the next day, meaning there's a white area or a, a blank area in there. Now, this all kind of follows with the, uh, the logic that Japanese race traders show us is, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. The reason I became such a good candlestick trader was I could see graphically where I was usually buying and where I was usually selling. I was even a stockbroker for eight years. And I 
always ask the rhetorical question, how come every time I start buying something, it immediately turns around and goes the other way? Or how come whenever I sell something, it immediately turns around and goes back up? Well, that's because I was doing everything that typical investors do. So there's four basic gaps. So you've got a gap up in the overbought condition. You've got a gap down from a signal in an overbought condition. You've got a gap up from a signal in the oversold condition. And you've got a gap down in the oversold condition. These all have relevant information. Two of them show force. If you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area, well, just simple logic, the Japanese rice traders tell us, if you see a candlestick buy signal in oversold area, you're probably going to see an uptrend. Even more forceful is if you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area and they gap it up the next day, not only did they tell you there was a potential reversal, but that reversal is now not only confirmed, but confirmed with a lot of strength. Same scenario on the sell side. You see a candlestick reversal signal and they gap it down, tells you exactly what investor sentiment is doing. They want to be out of that uh, trade or that uh, price move uh, very quickly and with a lot of force. Two show exhaustion. Very simple logic. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top, which means if you see a gap up in the overbought condition, you start looking for sell signals. Or if you see a gap down in an oversold area and see a reversal signal, get ready for the reversal because that goes with where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. So let's start with the gap up at the top. For example, a doji is the most recognized candlestick signal. It's where they open and close at the same level. You got a small trading range, which is called a doji star, a big trading range, which is called a long-legged doji. A dragonfly doji is where it opens, trades down, and closes right back at the top, looks like a dragonfly. And the gravestone doji, the Japanese rice traders explained as warriors going out of camp, going into battle. At the end of the day, they're beaten back into camp, leaving their dead all over the field. That's the gravestone. So very simple doji rules. If you see a doji at the top, it's time to sell. If you see a doji at the bottom, you need bullish confirmation, or the Japanese rice traders say the weight of the market could continue to push the market down. And you always pay heed whenever you see a doji because that represents uh, indecision between the bulls and the bears. Uh, and here's the most important one. The trend will usually move in the direction how they open after a doji. Now, I use the term next day on here, but it's whatever time frame. Candlestick signals are the. Uh, the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling in a specific time frame. They work just as effectively on a one minute chart as they do a monthly chart. So if we see an uptrend and they gap it up in the overbought condition and do a doji, we've got a simple doji rule. It's gonna move in the direction how they open after a doji. If they open it lower, you can be taking profits immediately because it's heading, heading back down. So anytime you see that gap up in an overbought condition, that's your exhaustion. That's the uh, the uh, oh, the exuberance buying at the very top. Again, where do most people buy? Now, this was clearly illustrated not too long ago in Tesla. Uh, in our options room, people were long, people were long. Then look what was happening. They gapped it up. They gapped it up again. Oh, I forgot to explain our uh, indicators on here. And I can only see a couple of them. We've got the 50-day moving average, which is the, uh, uh, the blue line. We also have a red line, which is the 200-day moving average, which we'll see. But those are the moving averages that every major money manager uses around the world, every one of them and they make their decisions about their portfolios at the 50 and the 200. We don't use them to tell us what's happening. 
we use them to see exactly what everybody else is doing at those levels. We also have the 34 EMA, works relatively uh, effectively. But here's the most important one. You could take everything off the chart, except the candlestick signals and the T-line. There's a very simple T-line rule. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. With the caveat that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's gonna come back and test it. So as we saw a, a month or so ago on Tesla, it may have been longer, when they started gapping up and started moving away from the T-line, what kept us from taking profits here versus up here? Very simple. When we were already alerted to the fact we're that far away from the T-line, we flipped to the 10-minute chart. 10-minute chart looks just the same as any other chart, except now with it gapping up, it's pulled back, hasn't closed below the T-line. Still moving up. We're still a long ways away from the T-line on the daily chart. So we set a stop. Moves up some more, we move up our stop. Set, moves up some more, moves, uh, set, bit, moves up our stop, moves up some more, stopped out right here, which basically means we were stopped out up in this range versus down here or down here. So this is not rocket science. This is just simple logic that the Japanese rice traders have provided for us in a graphic uh, depiction of where is the common sense places to start taking profits or when to buy. And it's a combination of the candlestick signals and the use of the T-line. So if we see a gap up in the overbought condition, and it does an indecisive day right at a uh, resistance level, what do we expect from there? If it's breaking out, we're all well and good. If it starts trading lower, what's that tell us after they gapped up in the overbought condition? That's exactly where the, uh, uh, the resistance started. The T-line is at what level? The T-line is the eight exponential moving average. We call it the T-line short for trigger line. So anytime we see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, we can stay long. But the important factor on our charts is the signals themselves and how far away we are from the T-line. So we wouldn't be taking profits here. We would be taking profits right there because we're in the overbought area. We see a candlestick potential reversal signal. Then it starts trading down. What's the ob obvious? This is what they're using for a resistance level. Or if we want to go short and we see a sell signal, we're way up here, away from the T line. There's our little doji. It opens lower the next day. We're taking profits. Same scenario when you see a gap down. That tells you there's going to be a lot of force to the downside. A gap down tells you there's going to be a lot of force to the downside. So if you see a gap down in the oversold area, that's the uh, panic selling. Or if you see a signal and a gap up in the oversold area, that's telling you not only have they had a change of investor sentiment, but now they've told you to come back in with great strength. And notice what this so this is what we call convergence analysis. There's our doji hammer in the oversold area. They gap it up the next day and close above the T-line. That makes for a high probability that tr that trend has reversed. So we call it two plus two. This is what we call a left-right combo. Anytime you see a doji that's part of a uh, reversal signal, it's usually going to be a lot more uh, effective, a lot more powerful, because that day of indecision, we call it the left-right combo because it's a little left jab followed by a roundhouse right. That is one of your strongest uh, reversal signals. In the oversold area, 
right smack dab on the 50 day moving average and they gap it up, you want to be buying immediately. How long do you hold on to this position? Until you see a sell signal and a close below the T line. Anytime we see this, where you have a doji followed by a gap up and coming back up through the T line, that tells you there's a new strength coming in. So this basically is wave one, wave two, going into wave three. Notice all the dojis in here. If one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means Close much greater the line. indecision. And when they tell you what their decision is after that series of indecision, that usually represents a very strong move uh, continuing. That doji gap up, close above the T-line. Left-right combo, gap up. I mean, these are just very simple, uh, uh, what do I want to say, just simple analysis of recognizing the signals and patterns that the Japanese rice traders have illustrated over the last 400 years as being very effective uh, reversal signals. If you use any of the candlestick signals, like a bullish engulfing signal, opens here, closes here, dark candle. Next day, they open below the previous day's close, and they close it above the previous day's open. This completely engulfs the previous day. You see that, and then you start gapping it up. That tells you there's going to be a lot of strength in that next move. Little doji gap up tells you there's going to be a lot of strength in that next move. Bullish engulfing, and then they gap it up. All you really need to see is bullish confirmation. And it is enhanced when you see they gapped it up and started going positive. Hammer signals. Tail is two times greater than the body in the oversold area. And they gap it up. That's what's going to start your strong uptrend. A hammer signal will work if they open it positive or open it flat and start going then up the next day. But when they gap it up, that tells you there's a lot more uh, strength in that next price move. That gap down in the oversold area. Tells you to start looking for buy signals. That's where the panic selling has come in. So anytime I see this in the oversold area, and look how far away we've started to move from the T-line, you can start, start buying. Now remember, the confirmation would be a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. However, if this is a 12% move just to get back up to the T-line, Worst case scenario is you could be buying based upon the confirmation of a reversal signal and you see what it does up here at the uh, T line. If it fails, you close it right back out. Does this only work on day charts? No, it works on all time frames. Uh, this could be a 10 minute chart. This could be a five minute chart. It could be a one minute chart. I used to trade the E minis very successfully off a one minute, three minute, 10 minute combination. So it all depends on what your length of time of trading is. If you're a day trader, you might use a one minute, five minute, 10 minute combination. I'm a swing trader on my stocks. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that means my trades are usually lasting anywhere from two to 10 trading days. I'm using the daily chart. If the chart is working well, and I hold on to it and it starts showing exuberance at the top. That's when I'll flip from my daily chart to my 10 minute chart to see if it's time to take profits well before the daily chart makes a, uh, a reversal. If you're a longer term investor where you're holding on to positions for three, five, seven months, you might use a combination of a weekly chart and a monthly chart. That's called an abandoned baby. That's a one day island reversal. They gap it down in the oversold area. That was your alert to start looking for a buy signal. They gap it back up the next day. That's a very strong reversal. That's when you can start buying. 
So this is to illustrate, there's your hanging man, one of the 12 major signals, and it opens and starts trading lower. You can start going short or close out your long position. But if you see a hanging man and they gap it down, that's that much more compelling that there's going to be a, a strong downtrend. This is called the inverted hammer. This is the reverse psychology. Uh, let me go back to the previous one. The reverse psychology of a hanging man is the bulls are happy, the bulls are happy, the bulls are happy. Up, oh, they start selling it off and the bulls are nervous, but they take it back up toward the top end of the trading range. And the bulls say, man, that made me nervous, but I'm all right. Well, the next day they open a lower, the bulls say, shoot, the bears are still here. Let me close out the position. Same scenario on the inverted hammer. The bears are happy, the bears are happy, the bears are happy. Oops, there's a little bit of a, a queasiness from the bears. They see positive trading, but they're relieved when they close it near the low end of the trading range. However, this is an un, what do I say, unverified statistic. This is my statistic of trading candlesticks for 40 years. Very simple. If you see an inverted hammer in the oversold area and they open up positive the next day, you probably have about a 95% probability or greater that you're going to be in an uptrend. So the inverted hammer is one of the 12 major signals, but it's one of the le less frequent of the 12 major signals, but it's one of the highest probabilities that if you see that inverted hammer and they open up positive, you can start buying. And the kicker signal, the kicker signal has the gap built into it, opens here, closes here. And they gap it up above the previous day's open and go the opposite direction. That tells you there's been a major change of investor sentiment that it's kicked everything now in a positive direction. So anytime you see that kicker signal, again, the gap is, force is already built into it it's going to usually create a very strong uh, buy situation. And this is what we call the bullish flutter kicker signal. Now, if I'm buying a kicker signal, and let's say somebody in our chat room says, oh, look at XYZ or look at Mako. Uh, it's gapped up and trading positive. And I look at it and see that it's doing a kicker signal. I'm going to scramble around and see where I can find funds or close out another position and see what the best thing is to do to buy, have money to buy this immediately. The flutter kicker signal gives us a little bit more time. Opens here, closes here, dark candle. They gap it up above the previous day's open, and they do a doji. Not very convincing. However, we've got the doji rule, which says it's going to move in the direction how they open after a doji. So if I at the end of the day, see this signal set up. Now I'm looking, getting planning for tomorrow of where I can get funds to buy if this opens positive. Because we call this a bullish flutter kicker because essentially if we took out this little flutter, you've got a kicker signal, which is one of the strongest candlestick reversal signals. So that gap represents enthusiasm and that they, there's a strong force that is going to be in an uptrend or identifying the panic selling at the bottom. And that's where you want to start thinking about buying is when everybody else is panic selling. And so you always have to, or I always ask myself, how come when I sold this out, this started moving right back up again? Man, oh man. And then... Finally, when I learned candlesticks, I realized that's where the smart money is buying. They're buying when everybody else is selling. Or if we have a pattern, there's our fry pan bottom. Looks like a big fry pan bottom. And where's the breakout? Right about here, where the fry pan bottom pattern started. And how did it break out with a gap up? And what's that tell us about our fry pan bottom? It's broken out. That's going to cause a strong price move. Same thing with a dumpling top, the opposite of a fry pan bottom. You couldn't trade this one way or the other, but you can see what the trajectory was. This big 
rounding top, and then you had your doji gap down. That's what causes the force to the downside. So these gaps have important implications. This is one that they're working with right now in the chat room. Notice our doji gap up. This is what we call the message. Because that doesn't really look strong, except what was the message? The message was that they gapped this up, showing a new strength. So what's your trading strategy with this type of signal? We wait to see when the profit taking is over and the buying starts. We can be buying right in here because this has told us there was a new force there was profit taking. Now the profit taking is over. That's creating the next price move. So very simple logic. If you see an over or in an oversold area, they gap it up, starting an uptrend. That's where you want to be buying. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So we'd be ready to take profits. So where's a logical place that would tell us the bears are starting to come in. Well, we probably would set our stop right here because logic says if they bring it back down through there, that far away from the T line, and after gapping up in the overbought condition, that's when you start uh, start taking profits. Here's another one that has a different uh, perspective. There's your fry pan bottom. And what started the uptrend of the fry pan bottom? There's your best friend signal. Your best friend signal is a doji followed by a gap up. We call it your best friend. We got about, you've, you've got the 12 major signals. You've got about six or eight uh, uh, candlestick patterns that work effectively. But we've got about 18 combinations of the signals and patterns that produce extremely high probabilities and high profits. Number one on our list is the best friend, doji followed by a gap up, especially coming out of the oversold area. That starts the uptrend. Now also remember we said, if you see a gap up in the overbought condition, that's time to take profits. However, look what's happening here. This is a fry pan bottom that's breaking out right here at the 50. That's probably indicating there's going to be a lot more upside. The black candle is a new color. Oh, that's from uh, uh, on Metastock's different uh, combinations. Notice how this actually closed positive on the day, just slightly. It opened up here and closed right here but it actually closed positive. So that got a black candle versus a red candle. Theoretically, I should change these all to red because as soon as it opens up here and starts trading down, it's giving you a dark colored candle. What do you use for the 50? What do you use for the 50 EMA and 200? Uh, no, they're the 50 simple and the 200 simple. And the reason we have those on our charts is that every major money manager around the world uses those to make their decisions about their portfolio. So a lot of people say, well, why don't you use the uh, 50 exponential and the 50 uh, or the 200 exponential? Wouldn't that be better? And the answer is no, we're not using them as indicators. We're using those indicators to see what everybody else is doing at those levels, what decisions are making at, at the 50 or the 200 day moving average. Okay, I'm making sure I've gotten all the questions here. Yeah, if you've got questions, feel free to, to yell them out. So here's that same scenario. We can identify when there's been a change of investor sentiment. Notice how the uh, the the 50 it acted as re, uh, support, and notice all the dojis in here. 
So you've got a fry pan bottom with a bunch of dojis supporting right off the 50, and you've got this kind of wedge resistance level, and they broke out. A lot of people say, well, shoot, I don't want to buy a stock that's already up 3, 5, 7, 10, 15, 20, 80 percent. You do if it's coming out of a pattern because that tells you exactly what's going on in investor sentiment. When a stock like Kodak gaps up, how do you handle it? Oh, unfortunately, we missed Kodak. Uh, we did get MNOV a couple days ago when it gapped up. Uh, I don't know how to bring the other charts over here. Um, when it gapped up, it moved from, I think by the time we saw it, it was at seven. It already gapped up three, four points. And we, if you see something moving big, it's gapped out and you don't know whether you're paying too much for it. That's where you flip to the 10 minute chart. If the 10 minute chart is showing that it isn't trading back below the, the uh, T line, you can buy it. Now, does that mean it might not immediately turn around and head the other way? Could be. But the probabilities are that if something's gapped up and they're buying it like crazy, if you're buying it when it's still above the T line, that means at least you know it's still moving in the right direction and the probabilities. So that's essentially what we did on that one. We were buying at seven or we were buying the calls at seven, and the stock went, I think, all the way to. 11 or 12 by the end of the day. So remember the graphics are merely, uh, or the candlesticks are merely graphics of investor sentiment. The 10 minute chart is a very uh, common sense application of that information that if you're buying something that's moved real big or is in the process of moving real big, you use the 10 minute chart uh, to trade intraday. So this one, with the gap up through this level, coming out of a fry band bottom, supporting here, I forget what this is up, is up a good percentage, but there's a good probability it's going to continue right on up. What would be the first target up here at the 200-day moving average? Uh, let's see. What is the difference? Oops. Oh, I missed. Did I miss all of these? Oh, maybe I was stuck. What is it? I must have not scrolled down fast enough. Do you call stocks? Do I call stock? Uh, if that is a question, um, on our website, I put out two or three stock picks every day. It's usually done in a two minute video format in the members area and it's not to put out stock picks it's to show people why those are being recommended and what the rationale or what the uh, analysis was that made those strong recommendations so we put out two or three stock picks every day in our website we have a, our chat room is open all day long and the benefit of having people looking for the same type of trade setups is that even if you've learned how to scan, which is very easy using, and that's uh, basically what we've done with uh, Jeff and I doing all the formulas for Metastock, that you can scan for the best trades each day so that you have a supply of uh, good prospects every day, uh, whatever your time frame is. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so I put out two or three stock picks every day. We've got a chat room, both for uh, analyzing stocks, and we've got another chat room for trading options. I, we usually do a Monday night free, or a Monday night is for the members. Thursday night is free, where you can see what the analysis is of what the market's doing, what signals or patterns are the best ones, what gold, crude oil, soybeans, uh, anything like that 
is doing. Um, but basically, it's a constant learning process to see where what what makes for a very strong uh, price move based upon human nature. And I always uh, reiterate that prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And candlesticks is merely the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. Why does it seem that all gaps in stocks fill? They do eventually, but they may not fill this week, this month, or this year. We're not worried about filling a gap. We're going to be trading this, and when that trade comes to an end with a sell signal, we're moving on to something else. Let's see. Gaps don't fill for houses. No. Uh, can I? No, but some some of the people in the chat room apparently did catch it. Uh, John, did I get that explained why some are red? Uh, again, notice how this one opened here and closed here, but it was up for the day because there was where it closed the night before, and this is where it closed. So that black candle is where it opens positive and then closes positive on the day, meaning uh, positive uh, uh, above the previous day's close. I mean, oops, sorry, did I? Go backwards here. Wix, can you say again what to look for in Wix size? So, a couple of the signals are like hammers or inverted hammers. The wick is two times greater than the body. Some of the dojis are in the middle, some are near the top. Oh, that's because they're, dip they're still dojis. A doji is a doji, no matter where it opens and closes inside the trading range. The important factor is that it closes right about the same level it opened, creating indecision that can be seen uh, between the bulls and the bears. Do we only trade the gaps if we are in overbought or oversold condition? No. No, it could be uh, it could be setting up a. Uh, you can see on this one that when this broke out of the fry pan bottom, usually on a pattern, a breakout is usually going to occur when you're in the overbought condition. So there's two, uh, I guess, two parameters. One, if you're buying a candlestick signal, uh, a bullish signal. You want to see it in the oversold area. If you're selling or uh, going short, you want to see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought area. A candlestick buy signal in the overbought area doesn't mean anything. A candlestick sell signal in the oversold area doesn't mean anything. You're looking for the signals to occur in the appropriate place of the trend. A pattern breakout is usually going to occur when your stochastics are already up in the overbought condition. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. I can see this didn't scroll fast enough. Ah, yes, this is a recorded video. Are long wicks more volatile than shorter wicks? Yes, that's exactly what it's telling you. Is there was a big, let's see if I can, there was a big price move on this day, which was, I don't see any small ones here, but remember when we showed the doji, a doji star is a very small trading range. A long-legged doji is a big trading range. And that is why we're kind of getting defensive or, getting ready to close out a lot of the gold stocks because gold over the last uh, few days have 
pre created some long-legged dojis in the overbought area, which is telling you is, there's probably going to be a change of direction and goal. Yeah, Kodak was uh, halted a few times during the day, but it, yes, got as high as uh, $60. But at that point, you need to be trading it off the 10-minute chart. All candle pat all candlestick patterns occur on no. Again, a, a fry pan bottom. The, the uh, candlestick signals are twelve major or the twelve major signals. Six of them are for long and six of them for short uh, trades. And the patterns. Remember, we just looked at a dumpling top, which was the opposite of a fry pan bottom. A dumpling top is going to tell you that there's going to be a strong down move, and that's usually going to come come from the overbought area. But it's probably going to break down big after uh, it's already down in the oversold area. We recommended Dix not too long ago. I mean, right there, because of our best friend signal. And notice where the best, best friend signal occurred, right here at this breakout level. So what can we assume about this move? If this is wave one, and this is wave two, and wave three is starting with a breakout with a best friend signal, we already know what a best friend signal will provide, a very strong price move. So will this go up the same magnitude as this? That's the target, but remember the most important criteria for getting or closing out a position is the candlestick sell signal. Okay. No, uh, Tom, this works for anything that has Fear and greed, stocks, bonds, currencies, uh, commodities, tulip bulbs. Candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of human nature. So it can be traded or used for any trading entity. So obviously your option trading strategies are based upon analyzing what the underlying stock is doing. We started buying calls on this day making this a very effective uh, uh, trade. This is what we call a 45 degree. Notice the gap up. And then usually after a big price move gap up, it goes into a very steady 45 degree. That allows us to either buy the stock, buy calls, or pick out a spread strategy that uh, works more or be more meta beneficial. And there's a very simple rule for staying in that 45 degree. As long as it doesn't close back below the T-line, you stay with it. Isn't Dix an example of a buy signal in the overbought condition? Uh, it, was a, uh, it was a pattern breakout. So you're up here in the overbought area, but look how it gapped up through the resistance level. So that was more of a pattern breakout telling us wave one, wave two, wave three. So how long do you stay in this one? As long as you don't see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. The T-line is something I used to make good money trading candlestick signals. And I say good money, before candlesticks came along, I was the worst investor in the world. I did everything absolutely wrong. I did some of them wrong enough times to make sure I got those wrong trading decisions down pat. But when the T line came in or was exposed, it was by uh, uh, one of my first private training students um, made it very simple. You had to have a combination, you had to have a sell signal and the close below the T line to come out. A 45 degree, let's see, which one was that? 
45 degree is going to be this big move. And then the 45 degree is probably going to be in this, uh, this trajectory. Best friend. Breakout. If gap filled up, then also is called a hey, best friend. If gap filled up, I don't understand what that means. Best friend breakout. If gap filled up, then also is called as best friend. I don't. Uh, Uh, Vizex, uh, retype that. Where do you play stops? That's the nice thing about candlestick analysis. A lot of people are told by money managers to place your stops at 3%, 5%, 7% below your price. The market doesn't give a hoot where you bought. The market is going to do what it's going to do. So. There's a lot of times where, for example, right here, if we were had bought in here because of the doji sandwich, the doji sandwich uh, is a bullish candle followed by a doji. What's the doji rule? If it opens positive, it's going to trade positive. If it opens positive, what's it going to do? It's probably going to have the same magnitude as this candle right here. So it becomes a doji sandwich with two big candles and the doji sandwiched in between. And it did it right here at the breakout level, which told us there was going to be more upside. Now we're up here in the overbought area, and we're seeing a hanging man and a doji. Are we still in an uptrend? Well, we better put a stop someplace that tells us if this trend isn't continuing, we want to stop out. So maybe we pick the low of the doji, because logic says if they open it and start trading down through that level, the sellers have taken control. We want to stop out of the position. The logic of stop losses is everything built into candlestick analysis is just logic. So stop losses become just as logic of where do you, where would you put a stop based upon what this chart is telling you? Would the The VWAP be equivalent in use to the T line on an intraday chart. I don't even know what a VWAP is, but the T line works just as effectively on the one minute chart, 10 minute, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. Is it still is still considered a as a best friend breakout after? Filling gap. Uh, no, if it came back and filled the gap, it wouldn't be a gap anymore. What we're looking for now, will it come back and fill this? Maybe, maybe in two months, six months, two years. Um, 12 major candlestick signals are there. How many major patterns are there? Oh, there's about eight patterns. Um, and these are patterns that you 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 don't have to learn. These are patterns that you're going to recognize. Prices move in patterns. That's what Elliott Wave kind of illustrated. Is that prices move in waves? Uh, prices move in patterns, and the reason we recognize patterns is because Human nature works the same way time after time, creating patterns in, in price moves. Volume weighted average price. Uh, no, volume does not have anything to do with, uh, with price. A lot of people say, well, I want to see the volume go up as the price goes up. Price and volume have nothing to do with each other. If you've got something that's moving a stock and nobody's willing to sell, it's going to go up on lower volume now there are times like let's say for example on this day there was a big huge volume spike 
Well, that would be pretty good evidence that there was a lot of change of ownership. So you can use volume as kind of an added fluff to uh, add uh, confirmation that at a top or a bottom, when there was big volume, that meant the smart money or the uh, the uh, uh, panic buyers or sellers were buying or selling into the uh, smart money. Uh, let's see, I've noticed moving averages, whoops, time frames and candlesticks. I've noticed moving averages change a lot in relation to the candlesticks. What are your thoughts on this? Well, obviously the price movement on a 10 minute chart and the uh, moving averages are gonna be a lot different on a 10 minute chart as they are on the daily chart. That's just because it's still uh, it's it's using the moving averages of whatever that time frame is. Uh, can't if it's still related to volume. Yeah, there's no, you don't need to use volume. What is going to move move prices is price. All we're doing is identifying when there's been a change of investor sentiment, volume has nothing to do with what that, that price is gonna do. So here's where our buy was. We've got people in the chat room that bought Tupperware. There's our left right combo, followed by a doji sandwich. Now the left right combo is usually a very good indication there's gonna be more upside. The doji sandwich is has a uh, great expectation, which is there's gonna be more upside. So you've got a left right combo and a doji sandwich that's uh, producing more upside. How long do you stay long? As long as it doesn't close below the T line. Now, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So where would you set your stop if you were long this position? Right here, if there is enough selling pressure to bring it back down through the open of the day or this day, that's where you want to stop out. We were in blink. We're still in blink. Look how blink broke out here. Came up, started showing sell signals, and we started buying it back in here because it, it did the message and started uh, doing this fry pan bottom. And I had this. Um, and then today it broke out. Now, the nice thing about candlestick signals is, do you always get big days like this? Definitely not. However, if there are big days like this, you probably have a much greater probability of being in these type of trades based upon what the signal or the pattern is setting up. You can see the fry pan bottom. You can see that they never could close below the T-line. And this ran a big percentage today. And right now it's trading up here near, I think it was about 11 and it closed at 960. And right now it's pretty close to $12. Now, why is it moving up? I have no idea, but we don't need to know. All we're doing is analyzing what everybody else is doing. Whoops, did I do that? Uh, you can consider it both. It doesn't matter what you call it. You can see it's kind of a fry pan bottom, and you can see that it's the J-hook pattern. It doesn't matter what you call it. The visual is, is still the same. Probably now we're in wave three. How long is wave three going to be? Well, if this is wave one, it was about six points. That tells us we could probably be heading up to the $15 area. A left-right combo. Where was our left-right combo? He is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. And remember what I said, that anytime you see a doji involved in a reversal signal, it's gonna probably be a little bit more forceful. So you've got the left-right combo. So uh, we just did a training session this past Saturday where there's about 18 combinations, meaning, not just the signal or just the pattern, 
but signals and patterns in, in combination with each other that produce much higher probabilities that not only are you going to be in a, a bullish trade or a bearish trade, but you're going to be in a strong bullish trade or bearish trade. So a left-right combo on our list of 1 to 18 was, it was quantified, and we quantified it not on the basis that number 18 was bad or not good. It's they are all good. We just wanted to show which ones we thought were the uh, absolute best. Left-right combo is number two because it, a lot of the uh, signals require confirmation the next day. There's a high probability that on a left-right combo, the confirmation is going to happen. Um, uh, thank you, Mike. A while back, you said a fry pan bottom should be at least, oh no. Did I say that today? I don't think so. A fry pan bottom is merely recognizing this kind of fry pan bottom uh, uh, type pattern. It could be two weeks. It could be three months. It could be six months. What we're looking for is when, when the fry pan bottom breaks out. Oh, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have. I, if you got that impression, that shouldn't have been. Fry pan bottom is just the visual recognition of this type of setup that you couldn't probably trade until you see it confirming the, the fry pan bottom move. Okay. Uh, Jeff, were there any, uh, questions coming from YouTube or does anybody else have any further questions? Uh, there was, there was one, uh, uh question coming in through YouTube. Um, and it was, how do you scan with the sock? Or is there a way to scan for these patterns? So I will cover that. Um, okay. whenever you're ready. I'm, uh, pretty much done. If everybody's, if there's no more questions. Robert said, uh, uh, let, me, but let, me, let me reiterate what, what these pattern setups do for you. They do three things. One, they put you in the direction that you want to be going with a high degree of probability. And two, they're, they are, instead of being in a, let's say, a slow uptrending stock price in a slow uptrending market, the pattern breakouts or the strong reversal signals produce a much stronger trajectory to the upside and three if the market turns against you more than likely a strong signal and pattern setup is not going to sell off or it's not going to sell off nearly at the same magnitude as other stocks that are in a uh, pattern setup so there, you're basically putting yourself in situations where the probabilities of making good profits are are extremely strong and that if things the market turns against you, you've got a much better uh, capability of coming out without taking any or giving back any profits. One last question, oh. it looks like, uh, uh, Steve, if you can hear me. Um, is the fry pan bottom the same as a cup and handle? Robert uh, well, the fry pan bottom is the cup. Now, sometimes when you get up to the the breakout level of a fry pan bottom, the advantage of knowing whether it's going to break out or not is seeing what type of signal occurs at that level. If you get up to the same level of that uh, where the fry pan bottom started maybe weeks before and it does a bearish engulfing signal, that pretty much tells you it's not breaking out. You close out the position. Now, you don't get rid of that from your chart because maybe it's doing a cup and handle, which is the fry pan bottom followed by a little uh, uh, little uh, kind of cup setup or handle setup. And then you get ready for the breakout again up through that the top of that, that pattern. Well, right. A couple more questions. Um, is If left-right combo is number two, which is number one? 
the best friend. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lenny wants to know, are these names of patterns the Japanese descriptions, like Fry Pond Bottom, um, Abandoned Baby Hangman? I yes, don't think the Do Doji Best Friend was a Japanese pattern. No. Um, that The Doji Best Friend was my... Uh, name on that years and years ago is because uh, I just wanted to give it a simple explanation of why it's your best friend because it's a very powerful signal. So when I was showing it to people, I say, here, look at this doji gap up. This is basically your best friend. So that's why everybody starts calling it your best friend. Is, uh, is the McMuffin pattern a, a, t a Japanese description? No, uh, they didn't have <laughs> McMuffins there until the 17th century. No, the, the McMuffin basically is your morning star signal, which is one of the 12 major signals, followed by a doji sandwich. So we know that the morning star signal is usually going to produce a good, strong uptrend. It's a reversal signal. We know the doji sandwich is going to produce a good uptrend. That's usually the results of a doji sandwich. So the morning sandwich basically is your mcmuffin is kind of a double uh confirmation that you're going to be in a strong uptrend all right steve that's the end of the question so um oh uh, did you uh somebody wants to know if your saturday seminar i assume this is yours because i did do one on saturday was recorded yes yep yeah, do you have an email they can reach out in case they want to get a copy of that uh it's abraham at candlestickforum.com just uh, email him and he'll show you how to get linked up with it okay typing that out for you okay great job uh steve i want to show um how the add-on works it's been a very popular uh i really appreciate your coming in you always do such a great job and uh thank you thank you very much for okay. kind of thank you for having me contributions so let me go ahead and kind of move this over to me real quick and we'll go ahead and show steve's uh face again yeah, as i know. kind of <laughs> as i'd kind of alluded to a little bit earlier uh for a couple of years we worked on this candle profit systems 2.0 which is um what we did initially was actually take all of the patterns that steve likes to talk about and made them into software and it's been a very, very popular product. In fact, uh, about two, maybe three years ago, it was so popular, we decided to do a major upgrade to it. And that's why we're at the 2.0 version. Uh, to kind of give you, and I'm going to show you how this kind of works on a chart, how you can scan for these patterns, how this works as an add-on. But to kind of give you an idea of the patterns that are included, here's a list. So we talked about Doji Best Friend and the Doji at the top and the a lot of the doji signals, but we've also got flutter kickers, we've got J-hooks, we've got the fry pans, we've got the bullish belt hopes. Um, all in all, I think there's about 20 or so patterns on here. I think I counted it up one time. And if I remember right, it was about 23 patterns that we actually kind of find on the chart. Uh, and then in, in addition to that, we identified these single patterns on a chart. And let me just kind of show how this works in my Metastock. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to Metastock right here. and just kind of very, very quickly kind of show you how this works. So apply it, you're gonna get all of your moving averages, you're gonna get the stochastics, you're gonna get the D lines, everything's gonna be automatically drawn on the chart for you. And you'll notice that anytime that Metastock sees a pattern, it's just gonna kind of identify it for you. So right here before we had this, we're looking at the cues, by the way, but right here before we had this little bit of a run up, you had this J-hook pattern that showed up on the chart. Just a couple of days ago, we had a bearish doji sandwich. Here's a bear kicker. What I thought was pretty interesting is back in towards the end of March, the beginning of April, when everything kind of started to bottom up, all of the actual major indexes, if you pull them up and you attach this, all of them have this doji best friend pattern. So if you're paying attention to like any of the major market indexes, all the S&P, the Qs, and the DIA all had this doji followed by this gap up, which is what we have been talking about all day, the doji best friend. So all those are automatically labeled for you. If we come back here a little bit more, if we wanna see exactly kind of what 
any of these patterns actually mean. We can use what we call our expert advisor and our commentary. This right here is the commentary. There's a little black triangle right here. I'm just gonna push it to this J hook pattern so we can show you what, would have, what it would have told you on this J hook day. So in this particular case, it's just kind of gonna define the pattern for you. So long positions may be taken upon spotting this bullish confirmation following a period of flat trading. The visual pattern forms after a stronger than normal uptrend followed by several days of indecisive selling. As prices turn slightly positive, they begin forming the J hook. Uh, more conservative entry is to wait for prices to come back up through the previous high. You'd exit this particular pattern at any bearish candlestick signal that closes below the previous high. So I'm gonna give you some advice in terms of what this pattern is, what we see on the chart, what we're looking for in particular for this visual pattern and how you can trade it as well. Uh, with Metastock, if you're not familiar with Metastock, Metastock's only been rated the highest rated software program by the readers of Stocks and Commodities Magazine for the last 25 years ago. And one of the questions that um, I promised to answer by, from Norm in YouTube was, how do you find patterns? Like, what does the daily process look like and that kind of stuff? And it's incredibly easy to do with Metastock. So let me show you how that works. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and open up our Power Console. And uh, there's a lot of different tools in here. Pretty much what I'm gonna show you right now is what we call our Explorer tool. Or, uh, uh, and that's just what we call our scanner. Uh, somebody asked me one time why we called it the Explorer tool. I don't really know. Maybe Steve Akalis, the guy that named it and started the company, was a fan of Indiana Jones or something. I don't know. But that's just what we call it. We call this our scanner, the Explorer. Okay. Um, if I was to highlight any of all of this stuff uh, for Steve's stuff starts with CPS, Candle Profit Systems. So you'll notice that I've got a, in my list of favorites explorations right here. And if I hover over it, it's going to tell me what those particular scan is going to run for. So the Doji Dynamite is going to scan for Doji at the top, Doji Best Friend, left, right, bullish combo, left, right, bearish, series of bullish, um, et cetera. And all of those nine that you can kind of see right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kind of select the CPS Doji Dynamite right here. I'm going to select the list of optionable stocks right here. And I'm just going to, it's actually kind of a little bit off of the screen, but I'm going to click this button that says Start Exploration. So I've got all of my optional stocks. There's about 4,300 of them. I've got the Doji Dynamite. You could select all of these if you want to. I'm not going to because I want to be able to show this to you fairly quickly. We're already a little bit over time, which isn't really that big of a deal, but we'll go ahead and start that as an exploration. It's going to rip through those 4,300 stocks, and it's just going to show me the ones that have those patterns. So it actually opened up over here. <laughs> Let me kind of bring it back over to where you can see it. And you can see it's just, it's trucking through. It's about 300 now. Very, very quickly, it's gonna reject about 99% of the stocks and just show us the ones that have a pattern today. One of the things I love about kind of technology is like, for me, if I wanted to go through 4,300 stocks to find the ones that had a Doji best friend and see if there was even any available today, that'd take me a couple of these uh, big cups of coffee that I have right here and quite a bit of time to visually go through and inspect. And one of the things that I love about the scanner is the ability to do that for you. And you'll notice it's going pretty quick. It slows down a little bit when I'm sharing because of the processing power required, but it's about halfway done. And I'll answer uh, Leon Lenny's question um, uh, while it finishes up. So Lenny wants to know, does the Metastock software automatically label all those patterns? Yes. I have, in terms of the patterns that are being drawn on that chart, I haven't added those all by hand. Those are just automatically actually placed on the chart for you, Lenny. So that's a really good question. I appreciate that. So we're almost done. It's taken a little bit longer than I thought it would, but uh, we'll go ahead and let it finish up. It really is way faster than looking at 4,300 stocks, right? So generally what we're gonna get is, uh, we're gonna get 99% of these rejected. We're gonna have just a list of the ones that have, have a match for any of those patterns. I already ran this. And um, <laughs> um, I don't think we have any Doji best friends today, but we'll find out in a second. Mike wants to know if I smuggle my coffee into Utah. I get mine smuggled to me from Costco, Mike. <laughs> so, uh, if we're looking here, uh, so this is the way kind of the report looks. And this is just true or false. So one is true, 
zero is false. If I wanted to find all the doji tops, basically I just sort this and then I can look at Echo Global Logistics, Silver, um, Resource Connection. If any of these actually appeal to me, I could go in and look at them, see which ones I wanted to buy. So it's all done pretty much for you. Now, instead of looking at four to 300 stocks, if I want that doji followed by the gap up, I can look at those six stocks. Those are the only ones that had one today in all the optional stocks. So uh, there you go. Thank you, Greg. Greg is going to be my doji best friend. But that add-on has been one of our most popular add-ons. We spent such an amount of time creating it. Um, and I'm very, very proud of it. I remember, I remember when we were getting this ready for Steve, we'd have all these meetings with William, my programmer, and Steve, and they just worked so hard on getting it put together. Um, we initially got it done. We sent the, the first version over to Stocks and Commodities magazine. Uh, the, the late Dennis Peterson reviewed it and loved it and gave us a really positive review. Uh, when we got the second one, we sent uh, it over to uh, Barbara Starr, who took a look at it and gave us a very positive review from it as well. It's been one of our most popular add-ons I've released, and it's uh, certainly one of my favorite as well. So it's going to include all of those six explorations to find any of the patterns. You're going to get the expert advisor. You can, uh, it's going to apply all of the commentary and the labels for you. You'll get the uh, the um, all of the indicators. And all in all, there's 36 different patterns. I've got, I added that up between the daily and the multiple day patterns. So um, uh, that's the Candle Profit Systems 2.0. We're bundling that up with a training class that we did this year, uh, or I think it was back in January or February with Steve, where we sat down and actually went through uh, three hours of training with him, where he talked about his powerful profits with candlesticks, how to analyze breakouts, the three most, uh, the, the five most powerful top rank signals. And then I did a little bit of a class that kind of really talked about how to use CPS as a bundle package. So we're bundling that training. I thought it was great. Uh, we've had a lot of people actually go through that training since we put it in the can and uh, CPS. If you're just to buy the, the Candle Profit System 2.0 by itself, it would be a one-time cost. That cost would be $499. We'd back that with a 30-day money-back guarantee and you could try it. Um, what we're going to do today to kind of help you get started is we're going to give you the Candle Profit Systems 2.0 and Steve Bigelow's training, that, uh, that training course that we put together this year um, for $598. So instead of $499, you pay a one-time cost of $598. Um, we'll give you the training, the CPS 2.0. And if you need a copy of Metastock, if you don't have a copy of it uh, uh, already, I already talked about how it was the highest rated software for 25 years in a row. We'll give you a free trial to kind of help you uh, kind of get started. Uh, we'll give you a, a trial of our real-time software with our uh, Zenith market data as well. Okay. We're also gonna, if that's not enough, I feel like a little bit of an infomercial, but we're gonna also include some training that we've put together about how to use Metastock. It's called Unleash the Power of Metastock. It's a home training course. We're gonna actually have somebody on our support team give you a call walk you through the software with what we call our one-on-one -on -one white glove installation support. They'll help you install it. They'll go through some lessons that they've designed to kind of help you scan everything. And bottom line, they're going to be, be there to kind of answer any questions you've got. It also does include award-winning, uh, or award-winning. It includes access to our support team anytime you have a question. Uh, we keep more people in our support team than we keep in our sales team and our marketing teams put together. And uh, they always do such a really good job. Uh, there's not, it's not uncommon for us to get like 100% on our surveys for the whole week in support. So I love those guys. They do a really good job. You can take advantage of this. It's a one-time cost of $598. Just give us a call, 800-882-3040. You can visit us at metastock.com slash sales chat. Uh, you can also do this online at metastock.com slash candlestick forum. D is in David. Okay. Uh, one, I got a little bit of a quick cough, and then I'm going to answer your question, Lenny. All right, there we go. What is the minimum system <laughs> requirement on Mac OS X? Please don't say Catalina. So we we create uh, Windows software, Lenny. So I'm glad you asked. Um, it does actually work really well on the new Intel 
Ecom knew, but they've been doing them for years now. As long as you've got an Intel chipset in there, um, if you install Parallels or Boot Camp or something along those lines, and Windows, it'll work really good on a Mac OS X. But it is a Windows software, okay? All right, and I don't see any more questions. So I want to say thank you again, Steve, for coming today. I really no, no appreciate it. Thank I you for having me. Uh, Steve and I have traveled the world. I've learned so much from Steve. It's so good to have you, and we appreciate it. Um, I want to say thank you for coming and watching for an hour today. I hope it's helpful for you. Hope you learned a little bit. Um, and uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you at the next one. Thank you.